Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Integers in Real Life. This is part one. I'm excited to teach you this because here we're going to talk about, of course, the concept of integers, but really tying it back to making sure you really understand why we care about integers and giving examples from everyday life. Because a lot of times you hear from people, students, you know, saying, well, why do I care about negative numbers and integers? Like, I never use that. But actually, by the end of this lesson, you will see that you already really know what an integer is, and we definitely use them in real life, like all the time. We also, of course, use them in science and math. So let's just jump right into it. Remember, integers are the positive counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, and also 0, and also the negative counting numbers, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on, as we discussed in the last lesson. It's basically the whole numbers, which are positive and negative. That's basically what integers are. So first question, it says, Madison deposited $150 into her bank account. How would we represent this as an integer? Would it be a positive number or a negative number? So in general, when things are going up and you're gaining things, then it's a, we call it a positive number. So in this case, if we deposit $150 into my bank account, then I'm going to represent that as a positive 150, right? Now, it's a positive number, but I don't need to put the positive sign there. I could if I want to, but I don't really need to because if we have numbers that don't have positive or negative symbols in front, then we automatically know that it's a positive number. If it's a negative number, we have to put the negative symbol, but if it's a positive number, we, we don't really have to write plus all the time, right? So all the counting numbers that you know, one, two, three, four, five, they're all positive numbers, but we don't have to put positive symbols there. So this was $150 going into an account, making the bank account go up higher. We call it positive 150. What if I were instead withdrawing or taking away 150 from the account? Then it would be negative 150 because it would be the opposite of gaining money. It would be taking money away. So we would call it negative 150. Or what if I just didn't even have any money and I borrowed 150 from the bank? So I don't have any money, but I borrow, I owe money to someone else. That would not be positive 150. That would be negative 150. Positive numbers means gaining money. Negative numbers means I'm taking away money or I'm borrowing money. All right. Next problem. A city's elevation is 740 feet below sea level. 740 feet below sea level. So just to show you what that means, here you have the sea, right? And uh, sea level is like our reference. The numbers that are higher than sea level are positive, like a mountain over here would be positive above sea level uh, numbers. But if I had a city that for some reason there was a valley here, a big old valley, and then you built your city down in the bottom of the valley like this, then the city would be below sea level. So the numbers that are above sea level, which is the, the sea level is right here, would be positive meters above sea level. And the, the values below sea level uh, would be what we will call negative. They're the opposite of the positive number. So if this city was 740 feet a distance below sea level, then we would call that negative 740 because it's below the sea level. It's below the um, it's below the, the reference that we have. Sea level is a very common reference we use in real life. When airplanes fly, they fly so many feet above sea level, for instance. We use it as a very common reference. Below that reference, we would call it negative, just the opposite of the positive numbers. It's still a distance. It's still like a real thing. It just means it's below sea level. That's all it means. All right, let's say that, um, and I guess I could put some units here. This would be $150. Right, and then this would be 740 feet below sea level, ne negative 740 feet, right? You could call it that. The negative just means it's below zero. All right, number three, let's say the temperature dropped four degrees. So when we say temperature rises, that's positive temperature uh, increase. But if the temperature drops, that means that the temperature is not going up, it's going down. So that would be a negative number because it's taking away or going down. So that would be something like negative four degrees, right? Remember, the freezing point of water is zero. So any numbers positive to the right of zero are positive temperatures above freezing, above zero. But the numbers to the left of zero are negative degrees that are below zero. So temperature can be positive or negative. But also, if the temperature is climbing, we can call it positive temperature increase. And if temperature is falling, we can call it a negative temperature increase. And we keep track of it with a negative sign. Negative four degrees just means we've gone down by four degrees. That's all that that means. Number four, Connor added 625 liters of water to the swimming pool. 
So again, when you add things, it's a positive number. When you subtract things, it's generally a negative number. Here we're adding water. So we're ading 625 liters. I'll put L for liters and it's a positive number because we're adding water. If I had a bucket and I were taking away 625 liters from the pool, I would call it negative 625 liters is how I would keep track of the idea of taking water away. All right, problem five, Blakely grew eight centimeters this year. So again, when you're adding something, it's positive. When you're taking something away, it's negative. So if you add eight centimeters by growing eight centimeters, then we're gonna call it positive eight centimeters, right? Now, what if you uh, shrink for some reason? When we get older, you know, actually you start to shrink in height when you get to, to an older age often. So we would call that negative centimeters, negative two, negative three centimeters, negative eight centimeters. But here we're growing, which means we're getting bigger, and that means we treat it as a positive number. All right? Only a few more. Let's talk about the electricity bill. The electricity bill went down by $27. So usually we uh, use less electricity in the winter time, right? So the electricity bill went down by 27. Is that gonna be a positive or a negative number? Well, it went down. So we're gonna bookmark it as a negative number. Negative $27. So if you say that your electricity bill went up by $27, we call it positive 27. But if the bill is going down and it's falling, we put a negative on there to show us that it's going down, the opposite of going up there. Next problem, the population of a town grew by 183 people. If the population gets larger, we treat it as a positive number. So we might say 183 people. And of course, there's an invisible positive sign there, so we call it positive 183. If the population st starts to go down, maybe we're not, uh, people are not living there as much, they're moving away, then we wouldn't say positive population increase, we would call it, it let's say we lost 183 people, we'd put negative to show us that it was negative 183 people. That doesn't mean you have like a negative person, it just means that the population is going down by 183. If we were losing people here, of course, we're gaining people. Next problem, a debate team has two points deducted from their score. Maybe they had some kind of like uh, conflict or foul or something and they got docked or deducted by two points. Of course, the points don't go up, so it can't be positive. We're gonna call it negative two points. When things go down in general, we call it negative because it goes the other direction. It goes toward the left, right? Number nine, it says the available memory on a device reduces by seven gigabytes. So when you have a phone or a computer, you have memory and the memory is being used and so on, but the amount of memory available to be used by whatever of the programs, it goes down. So we call that a negative number, negative seven. You can call it gigabytes if you want. Negative means going down. All right, and here's our last problem. Haley's employer gave her a raise of $10,000. A raise means you're getting more money. You did a good job, you're getting more money. So we're gonna call that positive $10,000. When you get money, you increase money, it's positive numbers. Now what if the company was having a hard time paying the bills, about to go out of business, and they had to like take away from your salary. They had to, to give you less money. Your, let's say your salary, instead of going up by 10,000, it was decreased by $10,000. Then you would not put a positive sign here. You would put a negative sign if it was going down. So I hope by the end of this lesson, you can see that in general, positive numbers mean things are going up in general. Negative numbers are just the opposite of whatever the positive is doing, going down, down, down. So if you have a positive temperature going to the right, that would be positive numbers above zero or increasing. And negative temperatures would be going down or below zero, for instance. And in terms of distance and speed, if I'm going this direction at five meters per second positive, then if I had a, a speed of negative five meters per second, it would just mean I'm going the other way, five meters per second, the opposite direction. So negative numbers can be used for anything with a direction, anything where a, a bank account or anything when it's measured relative to a fixed point, the zero point, the positive numbers will be going up and the negative numbers will be basically going down or subtraction. That's what that basically means. So I'd like you to go through these and then follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice with integers in real life.